Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 65 for Saturday, the 23rd of January, 2016. Saturday. We're actually recording a Saturday one, man. Like, I don't even have to lie and pretend I'm in the country or anything. Everybody that's on this show right now, it's Saturday. Saturday. No time time skipping or anything else today. (laughs) Anyway, this this is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, and of course, you you just met Kent. He's that that asshole right there, <laughs> hey, what's sitting up? there chilling out. Hey, man, uh, let's go ahead and get into our guest today instead of uh, blowing them off like we usually do. <laughs> or, or do you want to just sit there and blow them off? I'm good. I'm good either way. Yeah, we can just blow them off. Let's just do okay. the show without them. Okay. So, um, um so you uh, you had it. <laughs> I can't do it, man. I can't do it. It's just too. Yeah. Rich. Hey, uh, with us today no, as. Well, can- Considering that that I advertised the hell out of it this week, we might as well go ahead and, and introduce Francis Madeira of Hip Hop's Cards, the beer card game. What's up, buddy? All good, all good. <laughs> I um, I have a strange echo in my in my headphones at the moment. I apologize. Are, are I, you li- <laughs> are you listening? To, are you watching the I video? Can, I don't I don't understand what's happening. I've got. <laughs> if you're if you're playing the video right now. Uh, push the pause button, or just mute the video that you're. Oh, yeah, don't one. Don't hang up though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and did we lose him? We lost him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks, guess what? We're still in beta. In case <laughs> anybody was wondering. <laughs> oh, it's so awesome. <laughs> oh, this is this is great. And I think we're getting him back. <laughs> Let's get a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. How is your echo? It's all gone. It's all gone. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> okay. So as we were saying, how are you, Francis? I am very well. I'm really well, thanks. Yeah, uh, great to be back. I was about to say, you were nice, nice and calm and ready to go, and then as soon as we started going live, you started jumping around looking everywhere like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, like suddenly ants were trying to tackle your lunch or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, oh no, we lost trying- his espresso. <laughs> yeah, my espresso. Oh. Um, I, um, I'd, I'd, I was looking for the live stream, and then I didn't realize I'd opened it in a separate tab. So. Uh. <laughs> Oh. And, and it was talking back at you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to radio, ladies and gentlemen. It is the 1930s. Yeah. And they come with a lot of open tabs. And- <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, so um, so we are here today to have a Ritual Misery podcast, which, as far as I can tell, is going splendidly as planned. As planned. As planned. <laughs> or at least as expected. <laughs> there, that, well... Kind of both, actually. Um, Francis, now, we uh, last time we had you on, you had an active Kickstarter. You were going full bore trying to get a game done. Yes. How's that going for you? Well, uh, I'm delighted to say it was um, it was successful, thanks in no small part to your support during the campaign. And um, it was, and all your enthusiasm, that's what I needed when it was uh, dragging me down, getting my three hours a night sleep during that, during that process. Um, oh, yeah. But it's been, I mean, I thought that was going to be, that was the difficult part, but it's been, it's gone from, <laughs> uh, it, it has been a crazy sort of six seven months since then uh it's been it's been like no other experience i've ever had it's been some of it has been really easy um a lot easier than i thought some of it has been a lot more difficult than i thought but um i'm delighted to say it exists now (laughs) and um, i know that you guys um got yours and um it i'm the it's been well worth it the quality i've been delighted with um the people that i've Met, I've met along the way, and now just trying to build the momentum and 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 get all the next versions um, uh, print designed and printed. Um, but just knowing that I've I've got it in, I've got customers in sort of fifty countries around the world. I've got it even stocked in some some bars now in about ten or and breweries have stocked it in about ten different countries around the world. I've only launched it about a month ago, and oh, man, it's already that is awesome. Taste there. So um, all the feedback, 
all the feedback without exception has been people love love it you know i was expecting to i was well i didn't know what to expect i've never done anything like this before but um i was expecting to have a mixed bag but no out of everyone that's received the game they've been delighted um if they've responded if they said anything back which a lot of people have um i've only had uh, i've only had to work out how to do um international shipping for the first time in my life fulfillment and um and a few of them got lost in the christmas post uh, but um oh, and that in itself was was a crazy thing my um my last day to ship to the us was the 15th of december i had to make sure i got everything out to the to by the 15th of december to do that um i my printer who was amazing they said well basically the last day you can really um will we'll print the first ones off the line will be the 14th of december and they were being printed in Belgium, so I had to go. I went on the Eurostar train to to, <laughs> uh, to Belgium with a suitcase and just filled the first ones off the line to make sure I got them out um, to to the US in time because a lot of my customers were US. And I was so delighted when you said a couple of weeks back, Ken, on on the podcast, you were saying that you got them just before Christmas, and I was like, yes, yep. Yep. it worked <laughs> for some perfect people. perfect timing. Oh, oh man, that's so, so yep. Oh man, I was so I was so delighted to get the package in the mail because it had the cards. It had a, a, a like a postcard with with a really nice note from you. Um, I was actually very surprised to see that it had the pin, the the marking pin that you included in in the package for making your own custom cards and your your custom rules and things. It was just a, a very just a class act. It was just. Wow. Yeah. absolutely amazing i was so happy to get it and i couldn't I, and i i think i tweeted this but it, it was not a lie i ju just had this smile on my face for the entire rest of the afternoon just looking at the cards and telling people about them they're absolutely gorgeous it's a wonderful game good job man no oh, that's really nice for you to say ken well i i just figured that i wanted to give someone people something a bit extra <laughs> um because um because for supporting me with the pen and things like that and i i i actually went and looked um at loads of different pens i went and looked at like i originally thought oh let's try and get a proper branded hip hops pen but you can't get them with the thin enough um uh, line as a permanent mm. marker to be able to actually work on the cards. So I thought, mm. no, let's go for something quality. Let's put it out there, and then uh, hopefully, then people can interact with it from the start. Because the whole idea is that you can, as you as you say, you can draw your own um, your own favourite beer on the card if if it isn't in the pack. Take a photograph of it, and then I'll um, I'll contact the brewery and hopefully get them into the next edition it's a nice a more um a more old school way of uh interacting with a game rather than just like some some web portal or something like that i thought it'd be a bit more more fun i even had a brewery the other day from spain went and um did their own versions photoshopped their own versions of the cards and shared them and i thought wow this is pretty cool yeah that's awesome um, i saw a picture of, of one of the cards that they did it's it's pretty neat yeah they're pretty talented very cool. Now, now you do have uh, the base game's got forty four cards. Yes, um, you've got expansions on their way. That's right. Um, I've got around, and so th you're the first to hear this. I've got about eighty different breweries not in the pack already lined up for the, for the next um, edition. And um, the wow. way I'm going to do it is have not just those, but then also a load of the breweries that are already in the pack again. And I'm going to do um, a, a whole load of um, uh, foil-wrapped packs, kind of like um, uh, football cards or something like that, um, where you'll get eight random ones in a, in a pack. So it will mean that we can get as many breweries um, as we want into the next up to 400 can be in there in there i think um if awesome. if need be it's just it's just making sure i've got the right people the ones that the 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 the, the um the players of the game want in the game and um and that i'm not waiting too long before the next edition comes out i really want to build some momentum and and keep having these packs coming out because that was the one that was a big thing that um that caused me a bit of bit of a delay getting this this um the first edition out was actually just trying to get make sure that i'd um got the right people the right breweries in as soon as i could um so it just so, sometimes it was taking three months just to 
just to um, get in touch with a brewery and then get the artwork back and um, and make sure they were happy with it and it's taking care of their brand. So I've been on the front foot this time. I've got loads all of all of that all organised while I've been while I've been getting the first game out and just doing five things uh, at once just to try right, and make yeah. sure um, yeah, that, I, that I can build some momentum. I imagine talking to the brewers is probably one of the most rewarding and fun parts oh, of this whole experience but also i imagine like you were kind of alluding to one of the more frustrating aspects because you have to wait and you're not sure if you're going to be able to get these guys and yeah and uh, and so what i'm delighted with so uh, i i put it out to a public vote um to to get into the first pack um or into any of the packs it's entirely up to the the, the community Right, so it's definitely it's not not my favourite beers. It's yours, um, and I um, they happen a lot of them happen to be my favourite beers or some of my favourite beers. But that's um, that's just a beautiful um, um, uh, side benefit of it. Yeah. Um, and uh, but uh, but I I was delighted that I got the top four. That the top four from that public vote of every everyone all over the world over a thousand votes or a thousand nominees. Um, and the breweries like Evil Twin, Mikola, um, uh, actually I've got the top five, Founders as well, another fine US um, brewery, uh, Brewdog and Beavertown, the top five that were in my votes all got into the game. And so once I've got them, then it makes it a lot easier to get other breweries because if you've got people like, um, if people are watching on the live stream, the, the, um, the T-shirt I'm wearing now, Mikola and Ale Smith, people like those in the game, yeah. then you kind of, you think, well, I want to be part of that. And then you can see the, the beautiful shiny cars that um, Amos was just put, uh, showing there. People could see the quality. I haven't gone for the cheapest Chinese printing. I've gone for the best printing um, that I could. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, in, in my mind, there are two printers that print the best in the world, bicycle um, from uh, United States um, Playing Cards Company and, and Carter Mundi in, in Belgium. And I looked at both of those. And um, although Bicycle maybe make um, are, are known for the, the poker style cards, um, Carter Mundi are known for the more trading um, style cards. And they're the ones that make Pokemon and things like that. So I've gone for these really smooth um, playing surfaces, exactly their really highest quality playing cards because I figured they need to be shuffled really well. They need to withstand beer being thrown spilled all over them in the pub <laughs> yeah, environment. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, that, kind of, that kind of thing. So I've, I've really just thought, right, let's not try and go for the cheapest thing. Let's go for the best quality product and then hopefully buy and get, get the best breweries in and take time and make sure if it means that it takes a couple more months to get the game out, it's better if it's the product's going to be better yep. um, because I feel that's what people that are interested in amazing beer would appreciate as well. I think uh, I'm, yeah, I might. Abs absolutely. And, and as far as that quality goes and waiting for it, that, that is so true because you could have gotten this out months earlier, but it would have been a, a much less quality product. Absolutely. And all of the Kickstarters would have been uh, fulfilled, but are they going to reorder? Are they going to tell their friends about it? Mm. Um, Probably not, but but this product, even though it, it it was released a little bit later than what you had anticipated, this is like the highest quality cards that you can get, and it's just so, amazing. The cards are beautiful, and it's such a great game. People are going to tell everybody about it, just like we are right here, right now on this on this podcast. So we're going to tell everybody about it and how good it is, and you're going to get more business that way. I, I do have I do have one complaint. Oh yes, yeah. Uh oh. Here we go. So, so I got my deck. Kent, Kent mailed it to me. He threw it in a, in a little little mailer and, and mailed it to me over here in Korea. And uh, I opened it up and I was like, because I knew what it was. You know, he'd already told me he was going to send it to me and everything else. And I opened it up and I get it. And what I see is this box. And I'm looking oh, yes. at the box and the box is all beat to crap. And it's it's kind of <laughs> coming apart and it's, it's frayed at the edges. And I'm thinking, ah. Oh, no. So it took me oh, about nice. three hours before I actually opened it up because I was afraid I was going to look in and see cards that look like they've been punched out of like a, you know, some staples thing that you oh, bought man. or whatever else. 
So then I pick up the deck and I look at the cards, and these cards are amazing. Like these mm-hmm. things, these are just like they're amazing quality. Um, I haven't had a chance to actually play the game because, well, I don't have anybody over here to play with, and I've been sick as a dog lately. Um, mm. Me and Ken have gone gone a little bit through it, and man, it's it's the cards are great quality. They're full color. There's, I, I don't see anything that you're lacking except. I think Kent just destroyed my box by not mailing it in a oh, proper right. container. <laughs> but but I, I, <laughs> yeah, any, anytime I have the chance to put Kent on blast, I'm going to. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's but, a you know if, if my only complaint, and, and I'm really critical about everything. Somebody's video froze. I don't know if that's mine. It's somebody's always yours, Kent. Mine. Like it's always yours. Like why are Working you talking? Working fine to me. Exactly. Mm. So, but if my only if my oh. only complaint that I can find in my super critical OCD ass is uh, that. Kent destroyed my box on the way here. Not such a bad thing. <laughs> well, <coughs> I, even with the box, I thought, well, I'm going to spend a little bit more money. I'm going to put a bit of um, silver foil on the front, that kind of thing, because I, I wanted it to look a bit like a, a premium product, but I also wanted it to remind you more of maybe like a cigarette packet or something like that, mm-hmm. those kind of things, where it's something that you're not going to be embarrassed taking to the pub and having in your pocket. That's what I was, that's what I was thinking. But... But yeah, so uh, I'm sorry that your box didn't last all the way to Korea. Oh, that, that's, yeah. that's Ken's fault. Yeah, that's 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 on me. That, that was not your fault. There we go. Now we so, now we got everybody up. Y- you were talking about the um, the release of expansion packs and and mm-hmm. uh, foil packs and things like that. Do you have a any sort of a timeline a schedule for that? I'm I I'm not going to commit to anything, <laughs> uh, but I but I'm actually meeting uh, there's a the british well the london toy fair is on the, is on this weekend um on um on uh, sunday so i'm going to i'm going to meet with the printers and work out the schedule then but it it they they actually it takes a lot longer to get these printed than i than i originally thought <laughs> so uh, my when i originally got my um my quote i remember them saying yeah we can print you a million in um in uh in two weeks and i'm not printing anything like a million here um but uh but actually it it takes maybe it takes a lot longer because just just to get that quality to to do um that sort of accuracy of um of the foiling and things like that is is not an easy thing so Mm. the printer's like look we're not we're not going to give you a substandard product you've you've got we've got to make sure we get every single one of those cards perfect and Mm. so it kind of just takes as long as it will take Mm. um so I'm, right. ho- I'm hoping within the the it's definitely going to be in the first half of this year is hopefully going to be a lot sooner that I'm going to be aiming around sort of three months time. Okay, excellent, excellent. Cool. So another question that I had that that I was thinking about when you were talking about contacting the different breweries and and getting basically permission to use their brand, mm-hmm. have you talked to or is it even possible? Uh, have you talked to any Trappist breweries? I well, we've um, so Trappist brews are more difficult because their their issue is that they've all um, they've they're already oversubscribed many of them. So they so they they sell every single drop that they make, and they don't need to promote their beers. So, so you've got an issue there. So I've I've I need to go with those those and try and say okay well it's not about selling your promoting your beer necessarily it's just about educating people or um, see, uh, see, just giving uh, joy to your fans I've it's, had I had a sorry it's sorry. not about selling your beer it's about celebrating yes, your yes. Beer. Celebrating. celebrating see there you exactly. go man That's, there you I go. Like take, that it, take it take it go with it. Yeah, I will. I will. I, will. I, I had a, um, uh, I had a, um, a Belgian. Well, uh, it's not actually from Belgium, but um, uh, a new Belgian type brewery um, say that basically they stock three hundred beers, and they want to use this as an educational tool. So they want me to get as many um, in as possible, and I'm, I'm going to try. I've got already got line in the pack in the first pack you've got a couple of um of belgian beers in there and i think i've got another three or four lined up for the next next release so we're, we're getting there slowly but surely but um but really 
it's unusual that a brewery says, um, in fact, no brewery has said no yet. <laughs> um, it's uh, every, everyone that's, that I've met and I've has seen the, um, uh, either I've met in person or I've got in touch with, they've all, once they, once they see what I'm trying to achieve here or I am achieving here, um, they, they get it and they want to be involved because there's no cost to them. I'm not trying to... Um, uh, make money out of those, out the breweries. I just want to make an, a, a product with as many beers as possible, the ones that that, that everyone wants. So, so they awesome get it. Too. It's benefit for them. We'll, like um, we'll we'll get there. It just might take a bit longer with the with the uh, with the Trappist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking of Trappist, I'm, I'm people. going to I'm going to enjoy a uh, Rochefort Ten. Oh. It was it's the second half of my Christmas gift from from my friend Kim. So I'm. I'm Pardon me while I enjoy this, but by all means, continue the conversation. Um, I'm I'm sorry. There seems to be some static. There seems to be a little static right right, right. here, right right there. I don't, I don't know if you can see it. It's right. It's right there. Right. Right there. Yeah. So a little bit of static for the for the audio only um, listeners. Amos is uh, telling me that I'm number one. Yes. Yes. I'm pointing out your superiority. That's what I'm doing. Jackass. So, um, so I have a, a a request. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, and I know it, it's a little odd, you know. It's it's not like you owe me anything, you know. I mean, I'm 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 happy you're on our show, you know. If nothing else, we owe you, right? Um, wow. So my request is, is going to be pretty simple, and I think you already you've already done it. But I, I've I've uh, seen many games in the past where. You get a game and the first run looks a certain way and then consecutive runs end up looking different or just having a different vibe. Don't change it. This okay. stuff is amazing. Like you, uh-huh. you, you've, you've hit a home run on your first try out and that, like I don't see any reason to go back from there because uh, it's pretty awesome. That's really kind of you to say. Well, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go um, – I don't want to make it cheaper. I, I'd rather I'd rather keep the quality. I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep it entirely up to up to the community to decide. But what I am doing is introducing some other rules that aren't in the um, in the first um, edition, just because I didn't want to, to overload it with way too many uh, way, way too many rules. You don't. No one wants to see like a massive booklet when you open up a um, uh, a game. You want to be able to play it pretty quickly. But I, I'm trying to do that in a more um, interactive way. Stick them on the website, for example. I've got a couple of videos on there teaching you how to do things and some um, other sort of uh, uh, infographics showing you how to play different other variants. But inviting other people to uh, inviting the, play, the the community to decide rules. I think there right. could be a good ritual misery rule. I'm sure. Oh, oh. Hell yeah, yeah. We can definitely come up with something, <laughs> or uh, or have Chat Realm try to um, uh, come up with some stuff for us. Um, Movie Man uh, Lucas in the chat room is actually asking uh, uh, if any of your expansions will have a unique name or theme, and uh, how did you come up with the design for the cards themselves? Oh, that's a good question. Well, um, the the answer is yes. We're um, the, the the there are going to be a few different themes. There's going to be a theme um, around U.S. beers. There's going to be a theme around um, uh, other different regions over time. Um, there'll also be ones around uh, different types of beers. So, for example. Um, uh, loads of different spicy beers in the world at the moment so i've got it's getting hot in beer for that or um things like uh you've uh, if you've got loads of beers with puns in the name there's brew ha ha for funny sort of beers that kind of thing so i'll see how those different collections work um but they're going to be probably second half of the year when i by the time i get around to um doing those the next one's going to be these foil packs just because i've got so many people that just want to start building that collection um uh quickly and that's the fastest way to be able to to get a quality product out to to uh, to loads of people, the only variant that I'm planning is a uh, is a playing card edition, 
And I've got an interesting um, idea for for how that will work. That it's going to look slight. It's going to look different to to the way these these work. Um, but um, but I'll I'll save that for next time, probably when when oh, right when, when, um, when, when I'm closer with those. In terms of how I design them, actually, there is a bit of a story around that because I um uh, I, I started off. The whole project wasn't uh, my whole project originally was just a, a designed to be a way to relax me from my normal day job. I had um, I was so busy like, um, at the end of 2014. I said, right, I just want a, uh, an, a something to creative to do. I haven't done anything creative for a long time, so I was it was just a study of of drawing some beers. And originally, I did had this. Um, beer just hand drawn on on the front of on a card, and it was just going to be um, a, just a, a simple project like that. But then I thought, actually, no, my hand drawing's lame. <laughs> let's let's uh, let's um, change it to something a bit more um, uh, something that I actually would like. And um, and so I start. So I just started this process, and then um, so I eventually I, I got to this design of a single beer on a card. And then I thought, right, I'm ready to to go and try and get some breweries involved. So I went on a bit of a the tour went to um, to Denmark, to Norway, and um, and to a few other countries, a couple of other countries nearby, um, just to try and convince a load of different breweries to be involved. And along the way, I thought, well, ah, oh, there's this this font that I've, I'm using is called Hello Sands, and um, I really love this font. And um, I contacted the the designer of that, and I said. Oh, um, I'm, I know. Um, can I use it in my game? And also, I noticed that you're in Norway. Fancy um, meeting up? I'm going there to meet a brewery. And I went up to meet with him, and um, he was a nice chap. He's only he's only youngish, and um, he's um, and it was his first ever font, and he was letting me use it for free. And I said, oh, I'll take you out for some beers, and we just had um, we got absolutely smashed with him and his friends. <laughs> That's really, awesome. really smashed. But um, but we just sat there for a few um, few hours looking at the different designs and just um, f f going over a few different ones and um, and then part and then I just got this spark at one point and I said well why don't I just have two because we were playing the game in the in the in this bar in Norway and um, and um, he kept I just noticed he kept turning it around every time he was taking the cards and I thought why don't make it. Um, a reversible design at this angle mm -hmm. and from then I thought right I've got it I've got it the um this is now it's gone from something that was just something that anyone uh, like um if you're gonna make a beer card game the obvious thing is just stick one beer on there and then it, to make it a reversible design you've got it's taking it to another level and that's what I took to kickstarter but then because I had a bit of time while I was get organizing after the Kickstarter had finished, um, while I was waiting for the breweries to get all their artwork over to me, while I was getting all the artwork signed off, I just kept re-looking at it and thinking, I like it, but it's not quite right. Um, it just needs it needs something more. And, um, and that's when I came up with the idea of saying, well, why, do, why don't I take one color from each card? Or from each beer and make that the dominant color on the on on the um, on the card and um, and I tried a few versions and I thought right as soon as I'd got that then I loved it because it just makes it so distinctive so different from anything else and it means that then um, I can I can really just make that the design of the car the beer go across the whole page and not and not have to worry about my branding or anything it's my it's a distinct design and it's just I've, well, as soon as I've got that, that was it for me. I thought, right, this is it. This is it. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's really cool. And I, I've got one question about the design. Um, almost yeah. all of the cards are a bottle of beer. I think there's yeah. one with a can, and then there's a few that are taps. Yes. What What made you choose to do taps? Explain for? yourself. <laughs> <laughs> So um, it, it's just simply that a load of the breweries that got uh, nominated didn't do bottles or cans. So, um, so I had to make a decision. Was it about bottles of beer or was it about beer? And I figured 
Um, oh, I've made loads of decisions during this process. Uh, one of my other earlier decisions was, um, was it going to be a brand that was going to be about lots of things? Was there going to be a wine version, a whiskey version? Um, was there going to be, um, was it going to turn into all manner of other different um, different things? And you have to make these decisions all the time when you're designing something, obviously. I just thought, well, actually, I'm just going to make it entirely about beer. Was it going to be just about craft beer? Well, then what happens if um, if there's amazing beer that's been bought by a bigger company and it's no longer craft? Do they not go into it? Or what happens if there's been amazing beer that's been around since the 1600s in Germany and just because it's not craft doesn't mean it's not an, an, a fantastic lager or something like that? Um, so I just said, right, now it's about all beer and it can come in any vessel. <laughs> and... Um, that was a decision I made. Um, I know that I put, uh, some people might prefer the the bottles, or the or some people might only want the tapped beers on the in there. It's up to them. If they don't like if they don't like a particular card, they don't have to keep it in their pack. They can uh, swap it for one of the next ones. That that was what I was thinking. But that way, it's I can make it dem- democratic. Really, if it's a beer. If people want it in, it can go in. It doesn't matter if you haven't, if you're just starting out, and um, and you haven't made your bottles yet, or or something like that. Mm-hmm. Nice. That was no, really cool. So, you were talking about different rules earlier. Um, it, do you have anywhere, or do you do you have plans anywhere to put online, like basically like a repository of all these different rules that that come about? Yes. Yeah, so at the moment, there's a page on my, the, the website, um, is hip hops cards, hip hops dot cards, um, or hip hops cards dot com. Um, is um, uh, it, it hasn't got a lot of pages on there. It's pretty simple. It's got uh, it's got a shop. It's got a page explaining yep. what what the what the website is. But it has a page um, with all the rules on there. Um, and at the moment, that they're just the uh, the ones that um, that uh, have been officially created for the game. But as as more and more people create their own versions, I'm going to be start sharing them through there and also via social media. And the simple thing is, every um, every pack includes a couple of um, of of blank rules cards, and I'm hoping that people, um, uh, just, you know, to get get creative with those. I can imagine. I didn't want to make this into a drinking game officially because you know a lot of these. A lot of the beers in there, they're dr- drinks to be enjoyed, like that Trappist uh, that you're drinking there, Ken. You, 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 yep. you wouldn't want to be downing that. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely you, not. You, you, you've <laughs> got to appreciate that and, and taste it. But if you're unfortunately having to drink something horrible, and um, and uh, there are times when then when you just want to have a laugh and, and go for a more of a drinking game, you could ease the natural thing is to turn this into a drinking game. And sure, sure. I'm imagining that you could turn you could say with with this color scheme, you could say, well, every time a yellow card gets played, you drink a finger or two fingers of beer or something like that, or every time particular um, if you've got a lineup of some of the beers in the game. Then you could every time that particular uh, beer gets the card gets played, you might have a sip of that beer or whatever it is. Um, but I want to leave that up to the community to decide, and that's why uh, um, you've got those cards in there. And it's just simple; you just take a photograph of it, share it um, with what with any of the channels that that um, that we've got, and then we, then everyone can start playing that, and it could be quite a good laugh. Awesome! Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, um, so France is going to hang out with us for a little bit longer. We got a we got a little fun little thing to do later on, um, but we have some some typical business to take care of, Kent. Okay. Like, uh, um, the hateful eight. Yeah, man. Okay. So, new movie, hateful eight. I don't know if it's released in the UK. It's the new it, Quentin Tarantino movie. I'm very excited to see it, but so no spoilers. It. I think oh, it's yeah. only just come out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not. I'm not going to give any spoilers. Uh, but my son, my 16 year old son, and I went to see this earlier this week, and oh my gosh! If if you are a Quentin Tarantino fan, this is like a gift for you. Oh. This is it's fantastic. It, it especially if you if you enjoyed his foray into the old west with with Django Unchained. You're gonna like that. This is not like Django, but it's set in the same world, and it's in fact 
Tarantino said that it's in the same universe as Django and Chain. Yeah. It's not a sequel, but it's in the same world. And you can see, like, in one of the scenes, you can see Django's jacket in the background. So it's like the you know the same uh, same world, I guess. But uh, one thing that that I feel about this movie, it, it, you've seen uh, Reservoir Dogs, yes, oh, of course, the, the, yes, first, yeah. the first, the first, right. It kind of follows the formula of Reservoir Dogs, but takes it up like ten notches. It's okay. and of course set set in the old west. Hmm. It is it's wow. so cool. If you like Tarantino, you you absolutely have to see this movie. This is music to my ears. I um <laughs> I'm quite quite the geek in in terms of um rating my films on IMDb, and I've rated one thousand one hundred and fifty of the films that I've seen. But I think wow. hopefully all the films that I've ever seen probably almost. Um, but um, out of all of those, only eighteen films have got the ten. Um, out of 10 for me and Django is one of those oh, so oh, wow. that's, See, that's how much I like Django let, let me tell you about Django Unchained <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay now I have a blended family I am a 38 year old white American male so there's a couple different demographics there but the important part about this is that none of that fucking matters because Netflix won't show that shit. Every time I go to try to watch Django Unchained, legitimately, Netflix is like, oh, it's it's unavailable. Motherfucker, it's on the site. It's there. I can see it. And it's not just what? me. I've tried VPNing. I've tried seeing if there's network issues. I can watch anything else. But Django Unchained, for whatever reason, for the last several weeks, as I've tried to watch that damn movie... Netflix just craps out, <laughs> and I'm doing really? my best. I'm trying to be That's a I'm mental. trying to be a good netizen, and <sighs> not just jack the shit off the the torrent feeds. But Netflix, you're about this far. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch the damn movie. Just let me watch the fucking movie. So that, there's my story about Django Unchained. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Pissing okay. me Okay, Netflix, get on it! What yeah. the hell, assholes? So, yeah. um, so this episode of Ritual Misery podcast is brought to you by Netflix. <laughs> 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 right. Anytime you'd like to be disappointed about not being able to see a movie, cruise on over to Netflix, and they will never fail to deliver the disappointment. Um. So, uh, okay, so. So I have been really active in several Facebook groups lately, uh, mostly having to do with podcasting and uh, trying to not only expand my knowledge of podcasting and my network of podcasters, uh, pushing forth my new podcast, Undaunted, which is doing pretty well, uh, trying to get out there and find out what other people think of things and, and trying to form and shape and move and groove and do some handshake deals here and there. I came across one podcast that was recommended to me. And it's called The Scenario Brothers. Now, I'm not on my podcast pimping out another podcast because the podcast that I'm pimping out is not worth pimping out. This show, it's, I, I, I've only listened to, I don't know, like five of the episodes. And there's 11 of, 11 of them out there. If you took a couple rednecks, just straight up hillbilly ass rednecks, but they grew up in England or some some you know English accent country somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And you gave one of them like four shots of espresso intravenously, and you gave the other one a mask that every breath he takes, he inhales more pot. And then you face them with some of the most random scenarios, like would you have sex with an alien? And okay. let them jibber-jabber about it for 20 to 30 minutes. <laughs> That's this podcast. Oh, wow. It's, I'm going to have to check that it out. It is yeah. hilarious. Like it, it's, <laughs> th there's, a, there's a certain level of intelligence that you just don't need when you're listening to a podcast sometimes. Mm -hmm. they deliver every ounce of that non-intelligence that you need. 
Like it is, it's completely ridiculous. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I recommend just going out and listening to it. I didn't think podcasts like that. I mean, because it's it's actually well made. It's not just like two dudes getting stoned in a garage somewhere and bullshitting over a cell phone sitting in the middle of the floor. It's actually pretty well produced, and it's retarded and it's funny. It is, it, it is not a waste of your time, I guarantee. So that is uh, that's that's my my big media moment for this week. Oh, and, and I listened to probably fifteen different podcasts out. this weekend. So, <clears throat> but yeah, that's a that's oh, the Scenario God. Brothers, and uh, you can find that on iTunes, Stitcher, whatever other shit you listen to. Yeah. So, uh, my geeky thing of the week though is uh, on the phone. I discovered. Not only is there a Fallout Shelter game for you to play, there's also a Pip Boy version for your phone. Now, if you bought the special edition of Fallout 4, you got an actual Pip Boy that you could slide your phone into or whatever else. This is just the app underlying that. And it's completely designed to mirror. See, so I'll show you. It mirrors the Pip Boy that you use in game. To a T, even down to the color scheme that you choose. Mm. It has all the same menus. You can even, if you're playing the game, it'll link over the, the network and it'll actually show you your real-time stats and everything else from the game on the PS4 or Xbox or whatever on your phone. And then if you want to fast travel to places, you can actually do that on the phone and it'll take effect in the game. It's like having your pit boy up while you're playing the game all the time. Is it amazingly useful? No. Is it damn fun? And just like, if you want to geek some people out about a game on your console or your PC, link it up to your phone and just let them have that sitting there. It's pretty badass. I like it. I like that the, that, that uh, games are going in this direction, and I can't wait to see more integration like this. It does suck down the battery, so you want to keep it plugged in. But other than that, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Star Wars Battlefront has a, a companion app, and you can do things like change your weapons loadout, mm -hmm. like on the fly, uh, uh, monitor your stats, all all kinds of stuff. It, it's a pretty neat app too. It, it's not as integrated, I guess, uh, like immersive as what that app is, uh, because it has a uh, the Fallout Four app is more of a in game equivalent, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, where the 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 battlefront one is just kind of a utility. My uh, my cat is making an appearance. This is Billy Badass for anyone who doesn't know. We call her Billy. Hey, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. So, my my geeky thing of the week. I I'm kind of like pseudo involved with a, a nonprofit group on Holloman Air Force Base. That's um, uh, it's, it's here. It's where I work. Uh, they're called Comic Task Force, and their primary mission is to provide care packages for deployed service members. And you know, the people that that do this are usually sending cookies or toothpaste and deodorant or you know some sort of utility type of thing, where. where Comic Task Force provides comic books and tabletop games and and more of a like a kind of a geeky kind of care package for the troops and uh, they they put on all, all sorts of uh, fundraisers and really cool things. They actually did a thing tonight that I was unable to attend, but they did sort of a a game night on base. Uh, There's kind of a pre deployment thing, but anyone was was welcome to to come. Uh, they had uh, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, um, a couple other games. Munchkin, I think, was one of them. Nice. And it was kind of a, hey, if you don't know how to play these games, come come out. We will teach you how to play. If you just enjoy playing, come come hang out with us. It, it sounded like a really cool thing. My buddy Chuck uh, Falkenden, F excuse me, Falkenden in chat realm whenever he's on, uh, but he was out there tonight. Uh, so yeah, they, they do a lot of really cool stuff like that. And, um, 
I did some things with them this week that kind of set up some infrastructure for communication and stuff like that. And I'm not going to get into the specifics of that, but that was my geeky thing of the week. Nice. Uh, if they if they want any hip hops, I'll um I'll send some. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Just, just give me the details, and I'll no problem. Right so, on, um, right and and that being said, if you have a, a a local community thing that does does stuff for charity, especially if it's if it's military oriented or has a strong uh, military member or dependent uh, uh, presence, let us know. That's the kind of stuff that we we want to tell other people about and make sure that that's getting out there and and you know that that's just cool stuff man anytime we can be geeks for free especially if we can help out a cause <laughs> by all means absolutely so yeah and there there will be a link to CTF's website in the show notes right on all right so um what was your geekiest thing that you've done this week Francis? uh, uh oh you um <laughs> have uh, you know it's it's been a crazy old week i uh, I haven't, I haven't really done much geeky. I did just. I've been. I, the, when I woke up this morning, um, about six, um, just before the, about, the record of this, about three I seconds did, before I, we came online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I did start reading about the new iPhone um, 5SE. Have you heard about this um, rumor? I That's about did. The I did done. hear about this. It's it's what was previously reported to be the 6C. They're now calling it the 5SE. Yeah, 5SE. Yes. Have you heard this, Amos? No. It's no. going to be a four inch screen, this basic design of the iPhone 5. Yeah. But it's going to be a smaller screen and it's going to have like rounded edges. It's going to be a more mm-hmm. advanced phone than the 5, but it's going to be the, the basic design is going to be the, the iPhone 5. So is that 5. like the iPhone 5 second edition? Yeah, I yes, I guess. Or spe- yeah, they'll probably call it special, special edition. Ed- won't they? Yeah, special edition yeah. probably. Uh, but with but so then it's got the processor of the six, but then the live photos of the six S, and um, but the camera of the six or something like that. <laughs> yeah. it's, um, then, it, it's they're talking about it coming it? out. Yeah, and they're talking about bringing it out this spring. Yeah. Uh, one thing that never amaze, never ceases to amaze me, and never, uh, never stops the excitement is uh, is Apple rumors of any sort. I just love it. <laughs> but it, it was trending on Twitter. And, and it was the, like the more the wrong it's likely to be, <laughs> the more excited I get about it. <laughs> like it's they could be like, yeah, they're coming out with a curved phone that's actually going to curve in front of your eyes. You, it's going <laughs> to levitate in front of you. All you have to do is get implants in your in your skull so it knows exactly where in your brain it is. And I'd be like, yes. Do you remember when they were? I think it was for the iPhone five. They were predicting that it was going to have a projectable keyboard and all that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and instead now Dell has one or whatever. Yeah. It's not the phone. It's like a, it's like an all-in-one computer. Yeah, it's. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, good times, good times. <laughs> so I have a, I have one other thing that I want to share with uh, with you guys this week, and Kent, I already okay. mentioned it once to you, but I'm going to go ahead and pop it up on the screen. Graflex Saber Kit 2.0. Oh yes. Um, <clears throat> let me just say, wow, this is. It, it's 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 a it's a freaking lightsaber. Like yep. as close to a, a real one as you're gonna get. It, it's it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's two hundred dollars. Um, it makes all the right sounds, everything else. And I wish I could bring up the video, but it it man, if you're into this stuff right here, um, parksabers.com. Cruise on over there. They're not a sponsor. They're not giving us money or anything else. I just want to see no. one of these at every convention I go to forever for the rest of my life. This is the most authentic replica I have ever seen. Of anything, probably, probably of of anything, but absolutely of a, of a lightsaber. This is this thing looks legit as hell. It it, it is it is movie prop authentic. I mean, yep. this thing is it, it, it is even even more amazing. so actually. I mean, you can tear it apart, and even the insides are meant to yep. look like the inside of an actual. Uh, it's yes, it's and amazing. The the, fil- the filter that the light shines through looks like a freaking kyber crystal <laughs> amazing this thing is the the video that that is shown in their in their demo is luke skywalker's lightsaber the one that you see in return of the jedi and it is it is absolutely spot on yep. it is so cool it's gorgeous i 
I might have to dig deep into my pocket no, and pull, eight, and try eight to, pull to twelve weeks of production time. Right, right. But I might have to reach deep and see if I can find enough pennies to to scrounge together two hundred dollars. I don't know. I, I, that, that's, <laughs> that's pretty insane. It's pretty. It's pretty steep. But this thing is freaking awesome. So oh, that's amazing. So there's that. I did, I did drop that into the uh, into the chat room, and of course we'll have the link to that in the show notes. Um, yeah, that thing's pretty pretty amazing. So, all right. Now, I, I went ahead and at the, the suggestion of Kent, although no, not the influence of Kent, went out and gathered some questions to test some beer knowledge. Ooh, huh. okay. So, all right. So, you actually, you, you come I, up with I, something. Okay. I did. Um, it's, it's mostly American-centric, though, because apparently Europeans don't like putting shit on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not looking in the right place. In, in, unless it's under boob, because I found a lot of European under boob this week, but I couldn't find a whole lot of questions about European beers. So <laughs> Okay. Um, so I'm going to go down okay. these, and uh, we'll, we'll start with you, Francis, and uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go along, and I'll, I'll give you the question, and you can okay. either pass it to Kent or attempt to answer. If you attempt okay. to answer, it's worth two points. If you pass it to Kent, it's worth one. Ah, okay, okay. All okay. right? Because <clears throat> Kent's going to have a little more time to think about it. And then we'll, we'll alternate from there. Um, who was the first American to brew a lager? Ooh. Yeah. No, yeah. no, I do have some multiple choice I can give you, but that'll take away a point possibility. Right. Okay. So, but then if so, well, what are you reckoning, Ken? Are you, um, did you want, did you want to have, um, the multiple choice? Are you going to need the multiple choice? Well, the, I would okay. certainly well, need a multiple think, choice. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I think the way we're doing this is you get first whack at it mm -hmm. for the first. So question. you, yeah. So you get to choose. Like if you choose multiple choice, then that's that only affects your points. And then if you can't answer it or you don't want to answer it, then it goes to me. Oh, of course, I see what you say. Affects my okay. points. Okay. Yeah. So well, then I'm gonna I'm gonna pass this one. Go on. Ooh. Go on. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. So it's on you, Kent. All right. Well, I have an idea, but I. Don't feel comfortable without the multiple choice. So I'm going to I'm gonna take multiple choice. Does that take me down to a half a point? It, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll score it. I got a pen. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll write, yeah, I'll write so something you're gonna down. Do the Tom, you're going to do the Tom Merritt thing and <coughs> open up the, the gigantic tome of the rule book that exists somewhere out there. It's in here. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's in here. Yep. Uh, it got transcribed earlier via chat with, with Tom Merritt. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so, you, so your, your possibilities... In, in whatever order was on the website that I found the questions. Samuel Adams, August Bush, George Washington, John Wagner. August Bush. You, my friend, are incorrect. Damn it! Okay. John Wagner. <clears throat> you know how I know Damn. that's right? Because I've never heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> so, Okay. So I'm I'm pretty sure that he's a German guy, which would mean that his name is pronounced Wagner. Look, are you looking at the words or am I looking at the words? <laughs> you need to adjust from the sound coming out of my mouth. Don't give, don't give me this pronunciation bullshit. <laughs> okay, All right. So is All it right. my question or is All it right, go can't, back to Kent? It's, it's your question. Who's yours? Oh, okay. Okay. So All Kent, right. what state has the most craft breweries i am gonna go with washington Ooh, for two points washington and you Woo! are wrong wow oh i'm wrong you're wrong oh what <laughs> yeah so francis i'll go ahead and give you your four choices okay <sighs> your choices in in no particular order are new york colorado california and pennsylvania I would go for California there. Oh. That was going to be my second choice. Yeah. And you're wrong. It's actually New York. Ah, oh. oh, really? New York. Wow. Are you serious? I don't make this up. 
Someone else wow. made it up. Oh my up. god! They're, well, they're not very commercially successful. <laughs> Holy crap! Just All because right. you've never heard of them. Well, that's what I'm saying. Commercially successful. Maybe they're commercially successful like locally. All right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so, so back to Francis. A crystal okay. clear beer is an indication of what? Uh, give, it, give me the multiple choice. All right, all right. Multiple choice is uh, one, it has a high alcohol content. Two, it's water. Someone's trying to sober you up. <laughs> Three, it's gluten free. Or four, it's foreign. <laughs> Well, I, I'm going to have to go with B on that. <laughs> what was that? I'm going to go with B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely water. If I can get some. Yeah. You, you've had yeah. too many. That's a, that's a sign. <laughs> Brilliant. Hilarious. Amazing. So, uh, so, all right, all right, all right. Kent, back to you. Use that one. Um, okay. How many years was the length of the prohibition? Ooh, ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the prohibition came about in 1932. I hear a lot of cobwebs getting rattled around. There. Yeah, oh my gosh. I should know this. If you had asked me this like a year ago, I probably would have been able to rattle it if off. I'd know, uh, if I'd asked you this about 100 beers ago, you'd have been able to rattle it off, right? No, more than 100. <laughs> I, I said a year ago. I mean, come on, man. That's way more than 100 beers. Um, I'm going to say five years. Five years. Now, Francis, I'll get, it's not five years. So, Francis, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance here. You can either go over or under five years. I mean, it, it was over. Over five I'm, years. I'm pretty, pretty Fran Francis says over five years. years. It I was, think it was over 10 years. It was 13 years. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Good job, Francis. <laughs> <laughs> this is American history that I'm failing at, and right. the Brit is, is whooping my ass. Which, which, which just makes my lack of effort going into this even more cursory. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, we're on uh, question five now. So one. So, yeah, so, so, be so back, to, back to Francis. All right. Yeah. How many styles of beer are recognized by the Brewers Association? Oh, Ooh. my God. Okay. Now, um, now, now there's, there's a lot here, so I'll give you within five. That means you can be okay. plus or minus four. Okay. I'm going to go with Kent's, Kent's over there uh, uh, fighting my logic, looking at my math. That's fine. Five <laughs> plus or minus what? So you, it's, you, it's you, said, you said 30. Yes. Okay, Kent, would you like to throw a number out there? It is not 30. And I'm not going to give you an over-under on this one. Ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. How this many is styles the, which, of beer are recognized by the Brewers Association? The Brewers Association. Okay. Um, when Francis's guess was 30? 30. And that was not, with, see, not within five. Yeah, see, that that's... Man, that's see, a good. That that's sounds a, that's pretty, a really good. I, got him guess, actually. Yeah, that's, I. Well, I'm just I'm trying to think of ratebeer.com and all of the different styles that they recognize, which I'm sure is not lined up with the Brewers Association, but it's probably pretty close. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say forty. Forty. Yeah. Forty is incorrect. 40 is not even within 5. 40 is not even within 90. It actually is. It's just barely within 90. It's 123 oh. Oh, really? styles of oh. beer recognized by the Brewers Association. Oh, my God. So, Kent, That's I dare say you have some more drinking to do. <laughs> oh, my God. They they get down into the specifics wow. thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. They probably break, like, stouts into, like, 8 or 10 different varieties just... just mm in that like probably so, more i mean if we're talking 100 and what did you say 123 120 oh my god yeah that's wow okay wow. all right Good so back, back to kent 
Uh, this is one you should know, man. This is this is definitely one that you should know, but I think you're going to get it wrong anyway. <laughs> okay. What United States city is no is known as Beervana because of all the microbreweries? Seattle. Wrong. Francis, what? would you like to have a go? I'll give you the four. The four. Uh, yeah, go, go for the four. The four options are. Portland, Oregon, San Francisco, California, Boston, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania or Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, does, does say, that help? I'll, I'll go for B. B. San Francisco, California is incorrect. It's actually Portland, Oregon. <laughs> I need <laughs> Portland. See, how Okay. All right. Hey, I'm not even verifying that these are correct. I'm just saying that according to the answers I have on here. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. So we're back to, uh, we're at number number seven now. Yep, number seven. So back to you, these Francis. Are some good questions. Yeah, yeah. These are, yeah. These, are, these are tough. What is senesiliosophobia? Senesiliosophobia. Um, wow. The, um, the fear of the s- smell of beer. Close, very close, very close. Kent, do you want to have a whack at it? Uh, do I have multiple choice? You do. Of course, you got multiple choice. Okay. Yes, multiple choice, please. All right. It is a style of beer. The location of the first brewery. A fear of an empty glass or a fear of beer? Ooh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you it's thought you were C or D. You, you were cruising so, towards the bruising right there, weren't you? Like, oh, <laughs> shit, I got this. <laughs> okay, say, say, say the word again Senesilicophobia. I. Mm. See, the fear of beer sounds too obvious, but I think, and I think that if it was the fear of beer, it would be a shorter, a shorter word. So I, I think it's fear of an empty glass. It is the fear of an empty glass. Brilliant. Woo! I have, I have that. I have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get, I need that word. <laughs> yeah. So what is it? Cine, cine, what? Seno or sen, senosilicophobia. I don't know. I said sure. it. I said it differently every every time that I've said it. Yeah. So Th- throw it in the chat so that I can yeah. like copy yeah. copy this. I'm gonna be it using that. <laughs> Make a good T-shirt. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's a good idea. There you go. Let me uh, let me let me throw it in the chat real quick. I'm working on my multiple computers here. Oh my god, that is a. Oh, 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 I was looking at Movie Man Lucas's yeah, yeah. thing here. All right, so uh, so question number eight. This one goes to Kent. Okay. <laughs> what is the first beer to win a blue ribbon during the nineteen or the 1893 World's Fair? <laughs> Pabst. PBR. Yep, there you go. That's full points right there. Woo! Pabst Blue Ribbon. <laughs> It's like the, the choice of college students everywhere. Oh. It tastes just like Bud Light and Coors Light. It tastes, nice. tastes just like ass light. <laughs> right. Um, well, yeah, same, same thing. All right. Uh, <laughs> so here, here's more of an international question for you, Francis. What country has the most individual beer brands? Ooh. I think I know this. Oh, oh the pressure's on. Most individual beer brands. Yep. Well, it it could be England. What's your um? What's your uh? Well, can I get the multiple choice? Of course, of course. Uh, you have a, you have a, a Germany. Seems like seems like an obvious one to be on there. Croatia. Okay, that's a little odd. The United States. Okay, fair enough. And Belgium, which I guess I could be due. Yeah, I um. Well, I, the obvious one to me seems the U.S. 
if you're going to go on that, uh, that's, I, I'm going to have to go for the U.S. Okay, okay. All right, Ken, I'll give you a chance to agree or disagree. Oh, dang it. Ah, see, oh, man, I'm, I'm stuck. Between Come on, man. You've been a quiz answers. master before. You know how this goes. Yeah. I, I'm going to agree with Francis. You're going to agree with Francis. Yeah. And you're both wrong. It's Belgium. It. Okay. It yes, Belgium. okay. <laughs> I would have, would have, damn it. All right, so so Ken, this is this is a, every every single fucking town you drive through in Belgium yeah, has their own true. local brew. So that's true. Yeah, I was that just thinking, so just small. pure, ge- yeah, pure geographical size, and there's so many craft brewers now in the U.S. I yeah, mm. it made sense that it was the U.S. But okay, all right, all right. This is a, this is for all the marbles right here. All right. This okay. is it. It's 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 it's, pre, it's pre, it, it, the 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 difference in score between the two of you is is it such a minutia that it doesn't really <laughs> even matter. So we're just gonna go with the uh, the big question at the end. Question number ten. And Kent, I will give you the first chance at this. Okay. How many different versions of Guinness are there? Oh God. Okay. Um, and this is like a current question. This is like yes, a twenty, yes, yes. at in, least like late twenty fifteen. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh my god! It, <sighs> yeah, yeah. See, it's a good thing you got first run on this though, because Francis I'll, got kind of he's kind of got the home field advantage on this. <laughs> the neighbor, how, how many do advantage? I have? Do I have to nail it exactly? Yes, or? you have to nail it exactly. Oh jeez! Oh my god! Okay, I'm gonna get this wrong. Um. Yeah, g- give me. Uh, let me get the multiple choice. No, I'm not going to give you the multiple choice. Damn it! Okay, all right. Uh, not that it would help. <laughs> God, they got this. They got that new shit, like the, the, the. What is it? The. All right, man, you're stolen. Let's go. Oh, they. The... Tick tock, tick tock. Eight, eight, eight. I will say eight. Okay, eight, eight. It's a good number. It's a good number. All right, Francis. How about you? So is this actually on sale, or is it that they've ever done, or I th- that I don't know. I, I would assume mm. current, uh, current, uh, current versions, but uh, current versions. I'm gonna go for. I'll go for twelve. Twelve. Twelve is is considerably closer. Uh, it's okay. nineteen. This must be historic. This must be like. <laughs> All versions ever. No, ever, ever. no, well, no. They, no. Release, they release at least one every year. So they just have, just um, on that, Kent, you're looking like a hundred and some odd years. But are, but are they? But but they're not all currently available. No, well, they've been here 250 years. Well, over 250 years, uh, Guinness has yeah. been around, James, and they they have game. their own. They do like a variant, one or two variants every um every year, I think. So there you yeah. go. So it must be what current concurrently. Wow. Nineteen foreign extra stout and yeah oh that that's probably yeah. my favorite Guinness right there. yeah me too yeah but what do you think of the 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 things that they're trying in the last few years like the the black lager and the what's the one now it's like the golden something or another <laughs> to be honest um I so I went to Dublin um as a little a little break just after Kickstarter start finished when I was waiting for um. Uh, for everything to to kick to to kick off again, and for the f- I've been to Dublin three times now. That was the first time I went to Dublin and didn't have a single drop of Guinness for the whole weekend. Because <laughs> oh my gosh! Actually, um, I, I met up with um, with a uh, with a guy from um, bi- um, from like the local craft um, beer um, uh, finding app and and website and 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 um, society, and he basically. Um, took me through every amazing local craft beer that they've got. Oh and my god! You know that would, oh, that would be great. Guinness is is nothing now to me compared to compared to the local um, craft beer that they've got there. It's just a, on a different level. Oh my so, god! I have no doubt. Guin- have no Guinness doubt. is now your Budweiser. Guin- well, Guinness is. <laughs> it's not quite my Budweiser. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's considerably <laughs> better than Budweiser. But but you cannot go anywhere in Dublin w- without seeing guinness guinness is absolutely it's ever present it is everywhere Mm. in dublin but but there's um you go to church in dublin they have a tap 
<laughs> I don't think anyone's ever done it before. Certainly not a, not a drinker. But um, but I tell you what, the, if you look at stuff like um, in the pack, G- G- Galway Bay, the um, the 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 beer from there, they've got some stunning porters that just taste so much fresher and lighter and more flavoursome and fuller. And I don't know, you just can't drink Guinness um, after that. I'd, I'd have to say, yeah. Oh, but that said, to be fair, I haven't tried any of their newer stuff. So, so what are they like? Do you say do- Dogger Lamba? No, I, I well, there's a there's a dark uh, black lager or dark lager or something like that. That I, I Guinness needs to, in my opinion, Guinness needs to stick with what they're good at, and that's stouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I have not had a Guinness other than their stouts. I have not had their like expanded brands. Mm-hmm. I've had a single one that I've enjoyed. Hmm. They're they're not they're not good. <laughs> Guinness is one of those beers that I really like to drink when I've got a big plate of meat and potatoes in front of me. Like that's sure. that's, yeah. that's the best way to enjoy Guinness to me. Right. Thing. Yeah. So. All right. Well, yeah, uh, I don't know. I haven't I haven't actually consumed a Guinness in quite some time now cuz Well, yeah, cuz you, you're sitting there with the trappist and... in your glass, fucker. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kind of spoiled on some of the more craft stuff, but but in a place where I mean you can get Guinness in every single pub in the UK, and if um if if you've if they don't have anything craft, then Guinness is is my go-to drink. So it's I'm glad it exists, and, and it yes. I'm over, yes. and it, I credit it with um with getting me into stout. So you can't uh, I will have, always have a fond yep. fondness in my heart for it. So, yep, so yep. I, same, have, same. I have to ask: and Have you ever had a left-hand milk stout? I have, yes. Oh, um, oh my god, yes. <laughs> that that is my current favorite beer. Um, hopefully, they still have it on tap when I go to the tap house here in uh, about three weeks when I go home for vacation. So that's yep. Uh, fa- Founders Stout, Amos. If you haven't had a Founders. Um, mm. It it trumps the left hand in my opinion. Really, yeah. It's founders is phenomenal. It is amazing. So we're we're actually gonna instead of uh, I think instead of going through like the big party scene like we did last year in South by Southwest, I think this year we should we should do like a a beer run. Just find yeah like all, a all the different, craft craft yeah. seeking yep. tour. Yep. Yep. So yeah, instead of just I'm going down. out and getting hammered or whatever else, let's just go find just amazing beers. Even if we just get one and split it or whatever else, we can have more to taste. Um, right, we should, right. Yeah, we should, I'm down for that. Yeah, we should do that because Austin's a, an amazing place. It's got a lot of microbrews right there in Austin, and uh, yep. I say we do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, that being so, said, if you were going to be in South by Southwest, keep this in mind. Have you ever been to Austin, Francis? No, no. And I'm desperate. Like um, I look at um, all the votes in my in my game. Um, almost, I think. It's, uh, Texas was second in terms of the number of uh, nominations for for breweries. So I'm desperate mm. to to go and visit, and I've got a couple of them lined up for for the next next release. So I'm there pretty pleased. Yeah, um, Austin's the one place in Texas. Uh, me and Kent both agree should just survive while the rest of the state falls <laughs> off the earth. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> just personal yeah, opinions. If, if I had to, if I had to save one city in Texas, it would be Austin. Yeah, if I had to save <laughs> one one city in a large swath of the country right there it'd be austin yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> austin is a, it, austin is a great city it, it, it is. is absolutely wonderful so did you it see is a great uh, American so city, uh, last week uh, david bowie died last week <laughs> and there's a bowie street in austin and i i didn't get i mean this is just off the cuff but apparently a bunch of people went through and changed out all the bowie street signs to say david bowie street really <laughs> yeah Oh wow! And I, I didn't follow in and see that they, they were going to keep it that way or whatever, but that's that's the kind of stuff you find in Austin, you know. Ah, see. Yeah. So very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, very neat. Yeah. Hey, so so Francis, before we wrap up, I've got just a couple of questions that I had written down about hip hops. Uh, oh yeah. One thing that's just it's a it's a burning question on my mind. There's a music video for the card or the the <laughs> rules for the 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 game yes how to please tell me how this came about the song <laughs> is so catchy and it's got such a distinctive look it's where where did um, this come from well i um so i 
you know, I'm I'm quite the podcast fan. As, as a, I um, I listen to obviously Ritual Misery, and I've got about f- sort of fifty others that I listen <laughs> to on um, uh, on rotation. So I'll listen to some every week, and well, actually, most weeks I'll I'll listen to as many as I can. Um, that um, and one of my favourites is um, Accidental Tech Podcast. Mm, mm-hmm. Don't know whether you're familiar with that one. Um, is um, is really geeky and i uh they've got this this closing song um where where they just um basically sings the the sing the um the 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 twitter handles of the of the hosts on the show and other things like that and it's i just kept finding that after i'd listened to this podcast i'd then be singing this in my head the next day <laughs> I thought, this is so good i wonder who does this so then i um i went on the site and looked it up and and i thought oh this guy jonathan mann i recognize him he had done the song for um antenna gate do you remember with the iphone 4 when if you oh yes it in yes. a particular way then um then um then it would drop calls and what had happened was he do, he was this he's this guy that does, did a song a day song a day man um, oh, onto his yeah 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 onto his um, YouTube channel and I'd um, and he had basically one time um, uh, Steve Jobs decided to open up uh, a keynote with his Antenna Gate song that he, um, and actually the only time he'd ever done anything like that and it was phenomenal and I remember I uh, said so I remembered that and I thought remember this uh, and a fan of um, accidental tech podcast so I thought well you know I'll, I'll get in touch I'll just uh, explain the game and say look this is what I'd love to do I'd love to do something a bit more creative it's not about how how many games can I sell out on the back of this I just want to do something that's going to be fun that's going to be You've got con- creative control, and you just do something that's just going to be um, enjoyable for people. And um, we worked together on that, and he came, and and that's what he came up with. Uh, um, a guy from um, New Jersey, Jonathan Mann, and I'm just just phenomenal. I'm really, really delighted with it, and so it's out there, and um, and it gets stuck in my head every yes, time. Yes. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm walking along the street humming it, and I realise that I'm just singing my own theme song, <laughs> and it's a <laughs> wonderful thing. Oh, it is so cool! And I was playing it, but before the show, probably about a half hour before the show, I was playing it because I haven't I haven't heard it in probably two or three weeks or something. So I was playing it just to kind of remind myself of it. And my girlfriend Deal was like, to- "Would you Would you please turn that off because it's going to get <laughs> stuck in my head?" <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Uh, so so I've got a, I was, I was I've got a few friends um, uh, uh, that have played it, and their children start singing it whenever they um, <laughs> whenever they see me. And I think I don't know whether this is appropriate, but it's brilliant. <laughs> so, so you, here's a little clip of it. Hearts face down to each player, put the rest of the deck face down. That's the draw pile. Everybody looks at the cards. Whoever's got the lowest alcohol, they start. So there you go. That is awesome. Yes, it's so good. And it will get stuck in your head. The song's only like a minute and a half or two minutes or something, but yeah. oh my God, you will be singing it for the rest of the day. <laughs> that, that's just a testament to how easy it is to play hip hops. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's 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 great. So, um, so all right. So just a couple of, I'm, I'm going to ask you both questions at the same time so that you can kind of like rapid fire answer, answer. Um, do you have any thoughts of making like a a large uh deck box for people to put their uh not just their base deck but all of their expansions and and foil packs that they get something like a large container for all the cards they're going to get and then the second question is have you thought about doing any sort of like a um like a subscription service like let's say let's say i pay like Oh, I don't know, like, 30 pounds or 40 are, pounds are, or something. Are you watching the video it, as you ask these questions? Because like as soon as you ask the question, the answer is just written on his face. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I just wanted to ask both of these questions so I could just like mm-hmm. shut up and let him talk. Um, <laughs> so like a subscription service where I, let's say I pay like, uh, you know, 40 pounds or 50 pounds or something like that for a year. And then I just get like, I just automatically receive things in the mail. Have you thought about something like that? Go. So originally, taking your second question first, I um, 
I before I was doing the Kickstarter, I was thinking, yeah, I was I might make it a, a subscription model from the start. Um, but then I just didn't know um, whether that was going to work or whether there'd be demand for it. So um, I figured it'd be simpler to to go for just uh, uh, one thing um, or no, uh, multiple things at the time. But um, at the moment. I'm just keeping. I'm. I'm again trying to simplify it as much as possible. I certainly learned that from Kickstarter that um, simpler works better. What I have got on the website at the moment is an option um, to just pre-order everything that's going to happen this year, and then you can just do that as one as one amount, or you can pre-order individual um, packs from there and, and kind of a yeah. vote. Use those almost as a vote for which thing comes next. The thing with the most pre-orders gets most votes, um, and and that's how I'll release them. Um, there may well be a subscription model for for the next year, but uh, for this year, I, I'm just going to try and go at a manageable pace in order and, and um, release enough packs that I know I'm going to be because they're really expensive to 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 print a pack and um, uh, to get to get this kind of quality, and um, I just don't want to um, under. I don't want to over promise and under deliver. I want to go the other way around. Right, um, in right. terms of um, in terms of the box, I do have an idea around. Um, you know the 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 West Fullerton, um, or the, the the normal sort of Trappist crates, the wooden crates um, for oh, yes. keeping the beers in. I'm, I'm going to do a version of that um, as the box. I'm, I'm focusing on getting the new packs out first, but that's going to be the first thing I do after oh, that. That's- that's brilliant. I actually I have a wooden crate from Vesflaterin. That's it's, it's you in do? my Yeah, I have it as a decoration in my bar. <laughs> Is it Oh, cool. I bet your bar oh, have you shared pictures of your bar? Uh <laughs> somewhere. It's out there oh, cool. somewhere. Yeah, I you know what? You know what I'll do? I'll I will take pictures of it and I will yeah. I'll I'll email them to you. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, I just figured something that um, is respectful to the to the to the history of of beer um, and um, and those wooden crates are cool. So yeah, so they so they, they they will be coming, but I'm focusing on getting more of of people's favourite beers into the into the game first. Then I'll awesome. I'll, I'll get that, and then um, yeah, go um, go at a sustainable pace this year, but but still a lot to do and I'm, I'm I'm focusing I've been focusing the last end of last year was all about getting all the infrastructure into place so that I could fulfill these in a in a way that I wanted and and be able to turn turn that around quickly and um this year it's all about freeing up time from my uh from my other commitments so that I can just say right there is three or four days a week that I can focus on, on hip hops. And that, that's the way, um, that's the way I'm, uh, it's going to be as of a couple of weeks time, I'll be able to really, I'll, I'll be able to double the amount of time I can spend on it and just really get as many of these games out, uh, attend some trade shows to start with just, uh, just in the UK. I'm going to be at beer X in, in, in Sheffield and, um, and some other sort of, um, uh, game gaming shows this year and some, some festivals, but, Hopefully later on in the year, then travel to the to the states is would be my ideal if I can can make that happen. I'll be nice. very happy. Awesome. Nice. Oh yeah, definitely. Let let yeah. us know if if you're coming to the states. Let us know, and if we can swing it, we will try to. Uh, well, let him know. arrange a meetup or something. Yeah, because I'm only going to be in the states for about two months total of all of the next year. So. Between yeah, well, uh, well, that's true. Yeah, your, you'll be, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, we'll discuss now. Over email. I, I would like to say that uh, sometime I would, you know, once things calm down a little bit and uh, it's not not too much hype going on, all that other stuff, like you know, five years from now or whatever, um, I would like to eventually have you on just to talk about the Kickstarter experience itself. You know, aside from the game, but just. The whole Kickstarter thing, developing the company, the idea, going through Kickstarter, and some of the lessons you've learned along the way from that, and and how you've you've transitioned from a a, a crowdfunded thing to an actual fulfillment company. Um, someday I would like to have you on to talk just about that and and kind of get into the nitty gritty of of just Kickstarter. I have a lot to say about that. <laughs> I'm um, sure you do. <laughs> and um, as a as a as a preview of that is to say that there is there's a lot on the plus and a lot on the negative for going going with um with a crowdfunding and um um all the posit- as a quick summary i'd say that um 
getting people infused and the people that I've met that I would not have met or um, have um, involved in the game would not have happened without going through crowdfunding. So is that so getting those people is brilliant. But on the flip side, you're kind of bringing everyone to Kickstarter yourself. Mo- almost everyone that backed me were people that I brought to Kickstarter and then had to convince, explain how Kickstarter worked. Mm. So you've got this sort of uh, flip side there. So um, I'd love to chat more about that another time. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Awesome. All right, Kim, well, you got, uh, you got anything else before we uh, let Francis have his final say and in this, uh, this little shit show charade? Uh, no, that's... I'm, I'm uh, continuously I, working I, on ways to modify shit show to make it a, a good thing. <laughs> I, want, I, want sh- I want to turn, turn the, 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 the uh, connotation of shit show around. Yeah, take, it, take the term back? Yeah, I want to take own it back. It. I want to own it. I want, I want this to be the best <laughs> shit show out there, you know? <laughs> Which is pretty much where we're at right now. Oh, I, um, I want to no. walk out of the theater after an awesome movie and be like, man, that shit show is amazing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh it's like watching troll 2 or like sharknado or something Ugh. um no uh i just want to say two. thank you francis for coming back to the show it's no thank you again such a great pleasure to have you here mm-hmm. uh, no that's that's it i i asked all the questions that i had laid out and um yeah that's it amos right. what do you got um you know so I'm, I'm doing a podcast called Undaunted, where I'm talking to other podcasters and asking them their, their life stories. It's, it's, I try to keep it more of a conversation instead of an interview. Um, I just, uh, just, just nailed a huge guest, but it'll be a couple months before he, before he appears. Um, so I don't want to say too much as of yet. Um, but it's, it's amazing. It's a good time. I'm learning a lot about podcasting just from other people's experiences with podcasting. And it's so great. I, there's so many great people out there that aren't just doing it for the money and aren't just trying to sell something that are genuinely enjoying podcasting and doing it for all the right reasons, in my opinion. And it's it's pretty awesome. So whether or not they're making a living from it, just the love that people have for the medium and uh, taking the artist, artistry to, to the next level, it's great. So that's Undaunted. You can find that on iTunes and Stitcher and all, all that other shit. And... Uh, Man, we uh, we're going to South by Southwest. Yeah, like we are. Yeah. We are going. Damn we're, right, we are. We're going to be there for like two or three days. Three uh, days, four days. So I don't know. Yeah, whatever. It, we 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 have a we have a hard <laughs> we, we have a we have a soft timeline and a hard hard uh, end point. So. Um, oh, end point. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, like I have to catch a plane back to Korea <laughs> on the fifteenth. So there's there's that. Uh, <clears throat> But other than that, man, we're going to be a South by Southwest. We're, we're trying to get some things going. If you are a member of Diamond Club and you're going to be a South by Southwest, if you're planning on going to South by So Wasted, uh, if you got any of that stuff of going on, we are. I'm, I am working diligently. As soon as I can get to a couple nods here and there, man, I'm going to have some great ideas and some great concepts coming out. Yeah, um, I've got to stay a, tuned because we we are going to have something going on. It could be um, a couple little things, or it could be some really, really, really big prominent things so yeah yeah we're and might end up being somewhere in, in the middle there it, it it all depends on on who's willing to to allow us to help and uh allow us to g- give us a little leeway on what so either way we've got some big things planned regardless of, of other people we've got some some really kick-ass stuff planned we'll get more into the details on that once we start fleshing out what's actually going to be going on so looking forward to that uh south by so wasted if you haven't heard of it man you need to be there like if you're if you're a member of Diamond Club and you haven't heard of South by So Wasted, you're missing out. Then, yeah, then you're not a uh, full fledged member of Diamond Club. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and we do we're, we are going to have some swag on that here very shortly. That's going to be uh, ritualmisery dot com forward slash swag. Go there and you can get a, a t shirt or whatever else. If you are the first person that I find wearing a Ritual Misery t shirt in the wild, I am buying your beer flat out. First person wearing, oh, yeah. wearing one. You'll, in the you'll get two beers because I will buy you one as well. <laughs> so yeah. there you go. If you, you, you go over there and spend fifteen bucks, you could get twenty bucks worth of beer out of it. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because we're talking about Austin during South by <laughs> Southwest. So yeah. Yep. 
and it, it, uh, will, it will be worth your while to buy a t-shirt <laughs> yeah it, it, <laughs> and look for us <laughs> it, it, it very well could be we will be wearing fact, Mitchell and Lizzie all you t-shirts. gotta do is follow our twitter accounts and you will know where the hell we are yeah yeah <laughs> so just exactly show up where we are with your t-shirt and you'll just drink free all night probably <laughs> <laughs> i don't know you, you got deeper pockets than i do dude um so <laughs> so there's that uh francis what would you like to spend before we close this thing out man what else you got going on besides hip hops? what you got going in life where can people find you all that good uh, stuff yeah, so you can find me at um, at hip hops cards um, and or hip hops cards dot com. Um, all my life is de- dedicated to uh, to hip hops at the moment. <laughs> that's 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 what I'm doing. Um, if you do if you do go to the website buy anything, make sure you use ritual misery or one word. Make sure um, then you get free free um, international shipping. There we um, go. If you do decide to buy any on any packs, be brilliant. Awesome. All right, that's a um, hell of a good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and this is I, I got to explain to people. This is how this came out because me and Ken have lo- for a long time said we're not going to take sponsors, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. That's bullshit. We're not going to sell out. We we, may, we if we have five listeners or five million listeners, doesn't matter. We're not going to just be the Joes that are changing our show because of some jackass wanting to give us some money to push a message we don't believe in. So this is what happened. We didn't usually before the show, before the audio comes out, I find some way to make fun of Kent by isolating his audio and making it completely out of context. It's what I do. It's right. it's it's a brotherly love kind of thing. Yeah, um, I've returned the favor on a couple of occasions. Yeah, so it's it, you know it's, it's nothing. It, 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 you know it's, it's fun. This particular episode, we had gotten our packs, but we had we didn't have anything pre-show. Like we jumped straight in the show and straight out, and we were both busy, had other stuff going on. So I went ahead and just recorded a little thing about, hey, Hip Hops is awesome. You should go check it out. Francis hears it and sends us an email saying, hey, here's a code. People use this, they get free shipping. Well, fucking A. Yep. Of course. So yes. awesome. Yep. That, that's so cool. amazing. So there you go. Uh, hip- hiphops.cards or hiphopcards.com. Um, that's so on. Make sure I got those right. Yeah, hip hop stock cards, yeah. hip hop yep. cards dot com. Pro, promo code Ritual Misery, all one word during Rit- checkout. Yep, yep, yep. And you get free shipping and uh, it'd be just badass. So uh, thank you to our guest, Francis, man. You, you, you're you always awesome. It's always, it's, you have such an interesting story and we don't even know you. We just know the hip hop. <laughs> <view. laughs> yeah. And uh, looking forward to, to remedying some of that. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about the the game and and thanks for the for the decks. Uh, and, uh, thanks for inviting me. It's man, been a pleasure. I, I I I love the concept of the game and I love the cards. It's, it's just it's so. Oh, and first edition on the box. What's up, bitches? So um, <laughs> early adopters. <laughs> woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so. uh, Kent, where can people find more about you, man? Yeah, I go to Twitter at rm underscore del noche. I'm always doing something different. I I, I seem to keep reinventing myself on Twitter. I don't know. Uh, you never know what's going to come out of out of um, my Twitter account. So follow that. Um, you can also go to ratebeer.com and look up username del noche, and you can see the uh, the beers that I've been rating. Um, I'm I'm getting close to 500 beers. I'm almost at 500 beers that I've rated on there. That's amazing. So. Yeah. All right. And of course, I'm Amos, Ethan Kane on the Twitter. And uh, don't worry about it. I've already explained it about 5,000 times. <laughs> Follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. Submit ideas in our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 567 69 TRMPC. That's 567 698 7672. Of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give us feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening, for Kent, for Francis, and for me. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs)